Girl, you the dead. And she love me when I'm in it. And she never be pretending. Nothing is friend. She gon' tell you what she bought it. Cause she know you can't afford it. No, you can get it. Looking exquisite. No competition. Stay on the pivot. Hey, be wild. Start from there. Hi, this is Camille Cower reporting today from the E Spot right here at High Point Furniture Market. And I'm so excited for you guys to meet my favorite artist in the world, who happens to also be my mother, <laughs> Miss Olivia Gatewood. Hi, Camille. Thank you so much for the interview. Oh, I'm so glad to finally have you here in person. We can do this interview without our mask because we're both vaccinated. So tell me, what it brought you out to High Point Furniture Market today? Oh, I love coming to the High Point Market. Um, it's on my schedule for every six months. <laughs> so this year is like the first time it's back in person. It was virtual because of the pandemic and so on. And you being an artist, I want to start back from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. um, how did you get into being an artist? Camille, when I was growing up, we didn't have Netflix. We didn't have HBO. Maybe we that. had <laughs> well, Netflix. <laughs> we finally got a color TV, I think, when I might have been 11 years old. And the color was a tri layered screen that you put over this TV. And the top layer was yellow, that was blue, that was green. And then it was kind of faded out. And that I think was you got color TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she did. Sure. So watching TV was never one of my favorite things to do. Not like I had a choice to watch TV anyway, but there were so many other things that I found really fascinating, like drawing and competing with my brothers at the time, the drawing contest. My dad was a painter, so I would like sneak into his paints, <laughs> create my own artwork. So it was part of who I am. Yeah. So what made you decide to start in, like to be it as a profession? Because many people might feel like they're good at art or are an artist, but there's always been that push of, you need to have a real job, you need to have a career, you need to have a, a, a plan B, so to speak. But you never really did. So tell everyone how you were able to manage that. And what advice you would give to other artists? Well, I was defiant and determined. And I think with certain values, if you really pay attention and focus on what's important to you, your passion will feed you. And that has led me throughout my life. Um, my mother used to say, so what are you going to do for a living? I know you like art, but how are you going to feed yourself? I said, well, Mama, let's just give it a try and see what happens. And she stopped asking me that when I sold my first painting for five thousand dollars, and I showed her the check. She was like, "How did you? How did you make that?" And I was like, mm, "My passion is feeding me, Mama. <laughs> that would do it." So I did it. That brings up a really great point. A lot of times, people don't know how to. Um, Price their artwork, and I love your answer for it because it doesn't matter how long it takes you; it's the years you spend preparing for it. Can you say? Because you say it well, in such a more elegant way, but you know, I think a good example would be what Picasso, although he may not be one of my favorite artists, said uh, in a restaurant to a couple that walked in and noticed that it was Picasso, and the wife said, oh, it's Picasso, let me see if he can just draw something on this little napkin for me." And the husband said, great. So she walks up and says, oh, I'm so happy to meet you. Can you just draw something on this napkin? He says, it's going to cost you. And she says, oh, I don't mind knowing this. It's a napkin. It can't be much of anything. So he scribbles something. And she says, how much? He said, $15,000. I'm so happy to see you. She said, but it only took you two seconds. But he said, well, it took me 35 years to be able to do this two seconds. So anyway, it's an accumulation of time and interest and passion that affords you the opportunity for it to um, give back. And that's I, I just think so sticking with what drives you will not lead you astray. And it's interesting that when you brought that up, because it only took a few seconds and it was just an napkin. But the fact is, when, it, when you're an artist, you took years of classes. You took years of practice to get to a point where you even feel confident enough to ask for money. And once you get to that level, you're not going to just give your artwork away. Well, so that's a really good point that a right. lot of people need I mean, to be aware of. it's my profession. It's what I studied in college, and I've been preparing myself through my creative endeavors all of my life. And it's just like any other profession when you work 
before it, it should be able to reward you. And you've had some very famous people purchase your work, have your work. I mean, everybody knows Oprah. So Oprah owns some of your artwork, but then it's been on several different TV shows and movies as well. Over the years, it's just caught the eyes of the best designers as well. So I'm curious for you, do you have any advice for artists that are thinking of getting into the art world? Is there anything you would give them or tell them, any new or upcoming artists? Um, I would say to be true to yourself. Yeah, you know what? Don't I mean, try to mimic the work of someone else. Oh, they call us every day. I think that in time, your personal style will be revealed. And go with your personal style because you are unique to you. And your artwork should uniquely reflect who you are. That's what I believe. So, could not disagree. Or, no, I'm sorry, not disagree. Could not agree more. So, um,. You're here at High Point Market. We're here in Zuo Modern's beautiful yes. showroom. So I'm curious, what trends are you noticing as an artist? Or is there anything that you would even suggest for people to keep an eye out for? Because you're an artist and you can see all the wonderful things that are here. What are you well, thinking? Well, one of the things that brings me to the High Point Market every six months is to see the, the playfulness in colors and styles and size. There's a whole world of creativity that comes together every six months and they showcase what they've been working on and I find it fascinating to um, see a juxtaposition of colors and styles and it's, it's just exciting. Now what do you think of because we were talking earlier about how a lot of things are kind of re oh, yeah. like they're just what was old is becoming new again yeah. and I love it because yeah. I have a thing for 60s showgirls um, I want to have a 60s showgirl dressing room one day, so all this velvet and bright gold, gold and everything, I'm just loving it, even the piece behind us with gold. Right. What, were, what do you Well, you know, I've always heard that nothing is new. Mm -hmm. There's a circle, there's a cycle, and everything, it kind of revolves and it comes back and it's new again. Although, for example, mid-century design, I think it's right really there. very popular oh, right it. now, but a lot of people don't know it's really a mimic of the mid-century, the simplicity, the straight lines, the velvet, <laughs> velvet. and the shag pillow. Shag. <laughs> shag I mean, everybody loves the beautiful textures, I think because so many people are home, they uh -huh. really wanted things that were comfortable and, and just felt like, yeah, yeah, this is the time for reflection and to see that your environment needs you and I think that because now so many people will continue to work from home that they want an environment that gives them happiness and sparks joy and makes them smile so I've a lot of times I've been asked oh should I do this or can I do that and the answer is yes you can do it there's no no in design do what makes you smile that's the key, that you're happy with it. Now, a lot of people see artwork as an investment, which it can be, but the main thing when you're looking at artwork is, do you like it? How does it make you feel? Yeah, do you like that work? And can you see that in your environment? So speaking of it, yes. Uh, all the artwork that I have at my on my show is all by you. And the reason that I have them there is because they make me feel empowered. They give me that freedom and just I have this painting and it's just this woman that looks like she's just jumping in the sky or maybe she's jumping into the ocean. Like, you can be both. Mm -hmm. And either way, she's living boldly. She's living 100% mm -hmm. and her mm -hmm. eyes are closed and she's just taking the leap and the net will be there for her, whatever Thank it may you. be. Or the river, the ocean, whatever it may be. And so I love that your artwork evokes that kind of emotion Thank of you. Yeah. you can be anything, you can do anything, and your artwork is just I don't know, it's just like a free flow of just beautiful colors and like excitement. Was there ever a time you thought about maybe going a different way or you love keeping it white and beautiful and You colorful? know, it's, it's, it depends on my feelings because I paint from within. And if I'm feeling blue, you might see that in my artwork too. If I'm happy and I am feeling, you know, it's just really a reflection who I am at the moment that I'm creating the work. So the piece that you got, I was actually in a great place and a great element and it is revealed in the artwork. So it's multi-layered. There, there's so many parts of my personality that's revealed in the work. As a matter of fact, there was a time when I would just work, put it in the closet. Start something else, put it in the, in the closet. 
because when you paint and you reveal what you painted, you are revealing your soul. You know, this is who I am. This is my fashion. These are my shortcomings. I see all of that in my work, and you may not see it, but it's it's all there. Yeah. So it's it's I'm have to really look a little like, more deeper, so I can find out what's really going on my mom's head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right there. You don't even have to look deep. It's all in hieroglyphics. I got it. Abstract hieroglyphics at that. Yes. So. Um, I want to make sure everyone knows how they can keep up with you and find okay. you. And get, oh, we didn't even talk about your earrings yet. We got to talk about your earrings. We'll do it now if you want. Okay, perfect. Okay. So we'll have to put it in. On the, just to mention, these are paper and they're miniature artworks that I can do. Very, very lightweight, so they don't stretch your earlobes, which is perfect. Yeah. But you can find me at oliviagatewood.com. I'm on Facebook, same name, and Instagram with Olivia Gatewood Art. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being my guest today. It's not like you had a choice. <laughs> the joys of nepotism finally oh. kicks in. <laughs> but um, thanks again for everyone tuning in. This is the E-Spot with Camille and Olivia Gatewood. Thank you.